Every weekend, new movies hit the theaters in order to be devoured by people who want to go see, well, movies. And as we, we get further and further into the year, we start seeing some of these ones coming out that are really, really, really meant to be uh, audience pleasers, but also awards season fair. And that's kind of what I view when I when I look at the film uh, Hustlers. And so obviously today on Box Office Aftermath, we're going to be talking about Hustlers, a, a, a movie whose poster you're going to see a lot because it's really one of the only ones that came out. As we can see here, this one stars Constance Wu from Fresh Off the Boat, J-Lo. Kiki Palmer, Julia Stiles, Lily Reinhardt, and Lizzo, whoever that might be, and Cardi B. And it's inspired by a true story. And the story itself is about a group of women that are strippers who decide to get men drunk, like Wall Street men drunk, and then rip them off for thousands of dollars. Seems pretty legit, especially because Cardi B used to do that herself. I'm not kidding. Look it up. Now, the movie... Uh, did okay box office wise. We can see here uh, that uh, that it did okay. But what's interesting though is the production budget is actually twenty million dollars. A movie like this, you figured with the cast that it has, would probably cost more to make than twenty million. So obviously, it's meant to be more of a micro budgeted feature. Uh, everyone taking a bit of a pay cut, but thinking this one could potentially blow up and therefore blow up their wallets because they all probably get money on the back end. But looking at the 32 million that it grossed here just domestic, that's not bad, but it did come in number two after it chapter two, which pulled in another 40 million, which is still doing a little bit less than uh, than its predecessor, but still number one, a couple weeks in the row is good for Warner Brothers. But here's an interesting thing. It opened up uh, overseas as well and only pulled in an additional 4.4 million overseas, which um, is not very good, if I'm being honest with you. Now, I don't know which territories it opened up in. I don't know necessarily where it opened up, uh, but only 4 million off of having uh, Cardi B, Lily Reinhardt, JLo and Constance Wu all dressed very skimpy and bouncing around for two hours. You, you figure um, it would have drawn a, a bit more. But like I said, people aren't going to these kind of films and cinemas. This is the kind of movie people could look at and go, yeah, I could I could wait till it hits home video. And then, you know, and then, you know no one's around where when when I pull out the hand lotion, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, the the uh, cinema score here is not very good. Uh, a B minus on the cinema score, which is surprising. Now, granted, Wolf of Wall Street, a, you know, another award season, you know, film, it pulled in a C on its cinema score and went on to do very well. So this doesn't necessarily say uh, as much as you might think it does. But the Metacritic kind of comes in line with very similar with it being only 80 percent. So the Metacritic and, and the audience score from cinema score kind of feel very much in line, like a B minus. So you can kind of see a bit more of, of, of a trend there. And coming over here to Rotten Tomatoes, we can see that it's got an 88% certified fresh with 181 reviews, but an audience score of only 69%. Trust me, that, 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 that number's meaning is not lost on me right now, but it does have 4,400 verified reviews ratings. So again, something to keep in mind there with that particular number. But the critical consensus here says led by a career best performance from Jennifer Lopez, Hustlers is a uniquely empowering heist drama with depth and intelligence to match its striking visual appeal. So it's got enough uh, good acting to make up for the skimpy bikinis. I, I think that's literally what they're trying to say. But let's take a look here at uh, at what Inku Kang from Slate says, this is one of the top fresh reviews. Uh, she says, an immediate entrant into the pantheon of female friendship movies, Hustlers, a pretty much perfect film, makes plain the hollowness of so many other iterations of girl power in studio projects. You can feel its heartbeat. Now, that's an interesting take, in my opinion, because it does talk a bit about other female uh, friendship driven movies like Girls Trip, maybe now and then if you're a fan of that from the 90s. And it uh, it talks about the, the you know, the hollowness of many of those, like the sentimentality of, let's say, the, the sisterhood of the traveling pants and how it kind of felt a bit hollow because they don't ever spend any time together because it's all this. I don't know. That's a, that's an old movie. But uh, apparently this one is a good tight knit group. So I'm assuming off this, what it tells me specifically is that the actors really work well together, especially when they're when they're all together on screen. And that's actually been a major criticism of it. Chapter two is that the group worked well together, but apart, not so much. And perhaps this one could be the same thing. But coming over here to Ed Potten from Times UK gives it a rotten review, it says 
Yet, while it's superficially entertaining, this true life tale of lap dancers who drug their clients and max out their credit cards is like visiting a strip club, ultimately a bit depressing. But the thing with that, though, Ed, is that it's usually depressing once you leave the strip club. While you're there, it's all fun. I mean, I don't know this from personal experience or anything. I don't. But I'm just saying, I get what he's trying to say there. So we can see that when it comes to the, the critical uh, response, it is a bit mixed, but it is overall more positive than not with its 88%. Now let's take a look here at some verified. So right up the bat, we got two verified positive reviews. Carolyn J says, all with the nudity, it did not enhance the movie. Uh, the story was good enough without it. So apparently there's a fair amount of nudity. So if that is something you are looking to find out more about, uh, or if you're hoping that there is, there you go. Uh, and apparently it didn't enhance the movie. The story was good enough without the nudity. Nudity is kind of like CGI, right? It's it's meant to be a garnish on the film, not the whole meal, because that would be considered an adult film. Uh, so I get it. Anyway, and Christian here says, uh, just an awesome movie. J-Lo nailed her role. That kind of goes in line with, with the critical consensus saying that Jennifer Lopez uh, hits a career high. But coming over here to the to the to the rotten reviews or to the negative uh, fan reviews. Uh, Lord Zelo here says the movie was overhyped long and drawn out. It seems as if the story could have been told in 30 minutes, but instead I lost almost two hours of my life that I cannot get back. I am angry at myself for spending the money and time on this boring movie. I, I kind of wonder what he expected if I'm being honest, but again, this kind of story could be told, uh, very succinctly. It, but it, again, they're focusing on like the character aspect of it. They're focusing on the drama. They're focusing on the friendship because it is something that was made for a low budget, but it is being made for the award season. Now, Karen here, because it's always a Karen, right? Karen here, two stars, says the film was very slow and dragged on way and, and way too much boring details into the characters' lives. My 26-year-old son and I both kept wanting it to be over and it kept going on and on and on. Jennifer Lopez is not good as a pole dancer. It wasn't sexy like I thought it was going to be. Now, I have thoughts about that particular review because just you can read it and come to your own conclusions on that one. But that being said, I get it. It's a movie that both her and her 26-year-old son felt was boring and dragged on too long and it was nowhere near as sexy as Karen wanted it to be. Not saying anything. Okay, Hustlers apparently is kind of uh, more liked than not. It did okay. I mean, it made $37 million worldwide on a $20 million budget. Uh, the marketing campaign for this I, it was pretty aggressive. You know, playing up the 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 sexiness of J Lo and I mean, you know, it's kind of got something here for everybody, right? If you happen to be a fan of of Crazy Rich Asians or Fresh Off the Boat, and you like Constance Wu, this is for you. If you happen to be an old school Selena fan, or maybe Jenny from the Block, or you just remember J Lo going to that award show with that really low cut dress, this is for you. Uh, this is her also probably making up for Geely. I think everything she's done post Geely has probably been making up for Geely. If you're a fan of Lily Reinhardt from uh, from from Riverdale. Something there for you. Uh, if you happen to be a fan of Cardi B uh, or Kiki Palmer, or I, I believe in like Gabrielle's Sibido, uh, Sibido is in here uh, from what I saw in the trailer. So who knows? But the movie did okay. It's clearly got its audience that is trying to hook, but it may not be hooking the audience that it's hopefully was trying to bring in. And that would be the males ages 18 to 35. Uh, look, this is clearly meant for women. Let's be fair. It's just designed around women. It's a, it's a female based story. It's a group of female friends. That's what they're trying to push. But the eye candy on the screen is not aimed at women. It's aimed at men. So trying to get girls to drag their boyfriends to go see the movie may not have worked out because apparently people were still more interested in seeing it chapter two. But as time goes on, this movie could find a niche. It could find a cult following, but I don't really see that happening in the theaters, given that we're coming into the final part of the year and there's still a lot more movies to get to. Um, but on home video or on Netflix, yeah. I could see somebody in Netflix and chilling to this thing. And so that actually wraps up this episode of Box Office Aftermath. I'm curious to know your thoughts, your opinions. Did you see the movie? If so, what did you think? Let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you guys later. Oh yeah, no, no, please leave a, a thumbs up or a dislike. And if you leave a dislike, tell me why. Just interact with the video in some way. Really appreciate it. Have yourself a great night, guys, and peace out.